Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today, I am joined by the amazing director, Kevin Lewis. Kevin, how are you doing today, brother? I'm doing good, buddy. How are you doing? I am doing very well. Uh, for those of you that remember, we did have Kevin on the show back when Willie's Wonderland came out to talk about his first horror movie, The Shining. And he was an amazing guest that I was always hopeful to work with again. And here we are. Um, so... I got to know before we get started on why we're here today. Um, Willie's Wonderland is what it was a huge success for you. What was that like to see this movie take off the way that it did? It was awesome, man. I mean, it was so much fun just to see fans digging it and getting tattoos of Willie and just watching the movie over and over and getting shirts. And it was everything yeah. I wanted when I started, when I signed on to make it. So it was, it was really incredible. Dude, and it's funny because like, um, like you have the kill count, you know, James and Chelsea yeah. over at dead meat. And yeah. um, it, it's been fought so much that people went out of their way to fight, to make this a kill count episode on their channel and mm -hmm. to see stuff like that. I mean, like even for me as an outsider, that's yeah. amazing that people were such big fans of the film that they were like, we need these people to be able to do an episode on it. Is that something that like still to this day, like, like kind of blows you away a little bit? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it was like the other day was like a million views already on it and stuff. And it's crazy. Um, Geo Parsons, the writer, uh, he's the one I think that really started that that uh, train going. And um, God bless Geo, man. He got that going with him. And uh, it's awesome. I mean, just anytime people just like your work and, mm -hmm. and excited about it. And, you know, if you can if you could just make someone, you know, happy and kind of forget their life for, for a couple hours, you know, and just, that to me is the reward. Right. And I've had, I've had people see willies and say they want to go make movies. And to me, that's mm -hmm. like the best compliment you could ever get, you know? So I'm very happy. Well, I can tell you honestly that at every single birthday party I have for one of my three kids, it's your birthday and we want you to have fun is played full nice. blast at the party so your film has had a lasting effect on me and my family as well so i do want to say thank you for that and while that is a light-hearted horror film the reason we're here today is the complete opposite man the accursed um the film is available yeah. now if you guys haven't seen it yet i cannot recommend it enough so when you signed on to this project were you anticipating how truly dark this film was going to be yeah, I, I was excited about that. I wanted to do something different from Willie's. And, um, you know, you get kind of pigeonholed sometimes in the business, right? So they look at you and go, okay, well, you made Willie's, you made a horror comedy kitschy thing, but, you know, you know, that's it. You know, and it's like, no, I, I've got a lot of different shades, you know, colors in, in my palette, you know, and so I... I really gravitated towards Rob Kennedy's script. Um, I wanted to make a movie that was kind of a throwback to the 70s horror movies, like Willie's was a love letter to the 80s and uh, more psychological. Uh, the idea like Rosemary's Baby and The Omen and The Changeling, those movies I love. And um, it's funny because I was talking to my friend the other day, Scott Harbour, he was an executive producer on The Accursed and Willie's actually. And we were talking about it and he goes, you know, everyone, you know, people growing up now, they, they, they just, you know, when they talk about movies, they, they reference other movies. And the thing is, you know, in the industry, when you're kind of pitching a project, you're saying, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's Blade Runner meets La La Land. Right. So then you're like, oh, okay. Right. <clears throat> but, you know, it, it, it's tough because it's like, yeah, you have to, you have to kind of bring source material and say like, it's, it's this vibe. Right. And, mm -hmm. All the same same token, it is a psychological thriller. It's a drama. I think good horror movies are dramas, and it's a it's a movie about generational trauma, and mm -hmm. and it's an all female horror movie cast, which is cool, right? So, but you know, when I when I think about it, when I when I like the script a lot, that's what I want to bring to it. I want to bring more of a slow burn um, ease to it, where the movie feels kind of you unnerved through the whole movie, just something off and dark, sinister. And it just kind of, it kind of just works on you a little bit, you know, like the movies we talked about and the shining, like we said last yes. time. So this was kind of a perfect vehicle for me to do something like that. And before we jump into the all female cast, cause that is something I did want to talk about. 
Um, mm-hmm. Your directing style, do you mm-hmm. stay the same as a director on the chair? Are you the same for a movie like, you know, a lighthearted horror like Willy's Wonderland as you are for a movie like The Accursed? Is it still like the same type of environment for you? Or is it more of like a method? We want to stay dark. We want to stay, you know, mm-hmm. in the zone for a movie like The Accursed as to opposed to a Willy's Wonderland. You know, that's a really good question. You know, no, I mean, I'm pretty I feel I'm the same director for both movies. I like fun sets. I like camaraderie. I like my I love my crew and I'm I just love working with people and movie making is a team sport, you know, especially yeah. in filmmaking. And um I I just I love the process. Um and so um yeah, I feel like I'm the same guy who did Willie's who did The Accursed, although they're different movies and different flavors. Um, I'm the same kind of person. I really don't go method, you know, when I make these films um, because there's just so much into it, right? So there's so many mm-hmm. moving pieces and I just love, you know, the crews and, and working with them. I worked with the same guys. I worked with the DP, Dave Newbert, who shot Willie's. He shot The Accursed. Ryan Liebert cut Willie's, cut The Accursed. Emwa did the music that your kids love, you know, for, for <laughs> Willie. He did the music for The Accursed. He mm-hmm. also did you are my baby uh, girl song for it. The other song as well. So it was fun to work with those guys again. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, I'm pretty much the same guy. <laughs> well, and, and you just brought up the next thing on my notes, the influence of music on this film. You know, you are my baby girl is such a huge component of this film. And um, I think that this movie has that supernatural horror, but at the same time, it's very, very level. I mean, the movie starts with a twist. I mean, you get a twist right yeah. off the rip. You know, where yeah. did you get this? Like, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, we're watching yeah. it. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's fucking brilliant. Like, yeah. that's an idea. Usually, that's safe for the end of the film. You yeah. know, usually, your opening of this film, mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, would be the ending of a, of, a, of a different film. Yeah. You know, that's the big ending twist. And you guys punch you in the mouth with it right yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. And it's, where do we go from here? Mm-hmm. after the twist where do we go and this is where the influence of that music comes out and you are my baby girl it's so funny because that's a beautiful song mm-hmm. like that song is gorgeous mm-hmm. and the me i've got two little girls you know what i mean and the meaning behind that song the lyrics of the song everything about that song is just so sentimental and so sweet really? but yet if i hear that song now it's terrifying yeah. and i i yeah. love when a horror movie can do that with a film i mean like with Insidious and tip throw, Tiptoe Through the Tulips by Tiny Tim. Yeah. I would have yeah. never thought that to be a horror song. And now You Are My Baby yeah. Girl, like that song, is, and it's such a beautiful sounding song. How early in the process did you have that song and ready to put that into the film? Oh man, definitely early. Um, M was awesome. And uh, he, did, um, he did the Willie's Wonderland theme song before we shot the movie. So when I did the commercial, I had that song playing, right? Same thing with this. He did You Are My Baby Girl, because I had to have a play on set, right, for the actors. And I got to them, I got them the the demo and everything. So he wrote that and the theme song to The Accursed uh, before I even shot the movie, you know, which mm-hmm. was pretty cool. So um, and I, I love that. I love, you know, collaborating and working on stuff and trying to give the actors and everybody enough, you know, you know, to guide them to the vision of what we're trying to do, you know, as much as I can. So that was, that was instrumental, uh, no pun intended, right? <laughs> um, that, that we have, that we had that song for sure. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing I was going to say, when you, when you're playing those songs on set, people can gather that emotion already, whether it's the fear or the sadness that's coming with that song in this scene, that's integral to the moment. And I think that, um, it, you guys encapsulated that with this so well. And something else I wanted to talk about that you kind of touched on a little bit ago, the phenomenal cast you have in this film, um, all female cast. I mean, you got a couple pictures of dad and you got, you know, some police officers towards the end of the film, but yeah. the ladies in this film absolutely kill it in the film. Again, no pun intended. Um, yeah. Did Going into this, was it written as an all female cast? Like, did you know right off the top, like, listen, we're going to go in, we're going to have an all-female cast, we're going to, even like the neighbor, you know, that that's Mrs., yeah. you know, the female. Yeah. It, did you that's know that at the beginning that we wanted just a strong female cast throughout? Yeah, so what's exciting about the script, Ken, is that it was organic from the start, right? So when you read it, it wasn't like, well, it was males, and they switched it to females or this or that. It was 
it was true to what the story was about and it didn't and i loved about how they didn't talk about boyfriends right and it's like most mm -hmm. of the horror movies like the boyfriend's going to show up now and get the axe right it's like they don't we don't have that and you could argue the fact that uh both sarah's uh, ellie and beth um sarah demont sarah gray's characters um maybe you know have a lesbian relationship maybe not i don't know but you could look you could say that right so I really like that. I like that we just don't, we, we live it up to the audience and the viewer and um, going back. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Connecting and, the dots themselves. Cause that's you're, right. especially with those two, you're right. Because it doesn't matter if they have a romantic love or a yeah. plutonic love. The yeah. love between those two women is completely real and genuine yeah. to the fact where they will go to the end of the earth yeah. for each other. Yes. Yes. And that was very important to me. And, they were just, they killed it on those parts. And uh, they really did have that on set and off. They really cared for each other. And who who wouldn't want Beth as a best friend, right? Like right. she's your back, you know? So Oh, she's a badass. She's great. Um, and I want to go back to that opening we just talked, when you were touch on is that that opening, what I love too about that opening, what Rob Kane's script was, it was like, that was a mini movie into itself, right? That mm -hmm. first seven minutes. And that really drew me to this picture. And if you look at that and you kind of look at, it's interesting what you said about like, you know, the method in terms of like, am I the same director? I feel you could look at that sequence and you can look at Willie's and you can see a little similarities of what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, we can go, get, you know, get technical about using wide angles and things like that, but it has a kind of, I'm hoping at least kind of a Tim Burtonist vibe, a fantasy mm -hmm. vibe, a kind of a, I say whimsical, but kind of just kind of an out there, you know, and that's what Willie's was. But then we get more into the hard drama, right? When we go into the main story and yes. then we start building the train up until the end and with all, everything comes back cyclical. So, and she's such a great human being. Like when we first meet, you know, like you said, with that opening, another thing I love about the opening, and I'm not going to get too specific here, the yeah. hand. Yeah. Um, when we get the hand in the opening, it's in the trailer. So I know that we can actually speak of it a little bit, but when this is happening, you're like, what the hell is going on? I've been thrown yeah. into the snake pit and I don't even know what's happening. Yeah. And it unfolds itself and you're just like, wow. You know, and you got the little girl bite, you know, and it's just like, this is yeah. incredible. Yeah. And um, then we get to meet one of our Sarah's and you realize that she just wants to go back on her mission trip. She just wants to go and help people. And it's been canceled because of weather. And mm -hmm. you you feel this genuine sadness for her because the, the reasoning, the, her meaning that she's been looking forward to, to get away, again, I'm trying to be as spoiler-free as possible, has yeah. just been taken away from her. So now yeah. I have to deal with reality. I have to face yeah. this head on now. And yeah. like you said, I feel like the best horror movies have drama to go along with them. Um, that You need that. You need that drama. You need that love. Because if I don't feel that and I don't feel anything for these characters, I don't care what happens to them. Exactly. And you have this real love between these characters. Now, something I do want to talk about, because obviously as an old school horror fan, I love practical mm -hmm. effects. A contortionist yeah. as the monster to me. Um, yeah. That looks incredible. Like, yeah. again, I'm, you, you're coming into this movie, you know that it's the accursed. If you've watched the trailer, which you should, and by, by any stretch, now you should be watching the film because I have the link down here in the description so you can watch it streaming now. Um, the monster is beautiful. Yeah. Like, and I mean that in a sincere way because I love the fact that you got a dancer, a contortionist, somebody that is able yeah. to physically do these things. Yes. Again, I know I've been saying this a lot, but from the beginning of filming, is this something that you knew you wanted to do when you got the script? Did you know that you wanted a practical monster? You wanted something practically done for this moment? Absolutely. I love practical effects. I like tangible. I like you can feel it, you can touch it, you know, and I, I grew up in the 80s, right? So okay. you know, all the old practice, we didn't have VFX and CG like we do now with these Marvel movies and stuff. So I love that. And so my that was very key to me that we we had some of the makeup school actually did the, the demon suit and we had Troy James who played him. The monster and uh so but we augment it with the effects which is fine um mm -hmm. but the main the main focus was practical effects and i just love it because i just feel it's real and when you're on set and you're shooting it and you're lighting it you know it's just real and it's like old school movie making and and that's why i got into making movies in the first place right
Well, and I always feel like what you're talking about with practical and uh, VFX over top of it, um, it should be like salt and pepper in your mashed potatoes. Your mashed potatoes need to be your practical effects. Sometimes yeah. you need to spice it up just a little bit with that salt and pepper. And yes. that's where your CGI comes in. And Great. when you do, I like it that way rather than having the mashed potatoes be in your CGI and your salt and pepper be in your practical effects. And in this movie, yes. as weird as it sounds, you had a damn good bowl of mashed potatoes, my friend. <laughs> and that's something I look forward to. And another thing I love about this film, I love dark film. Um, you know, because this is a very dark movie. And I don't mean in color and contrast. There's a lot of beautiful scenes shot in this movie. But what I mean is at 90% of the movie, you don't know who to trust. Yeah. You know, you have these people and you don't know, is this, are they on my side? Are they not on my side? Is this person who they really say they are? Are they not who they say they are? When you leave the audience guessing like that as a filmmaker, is that like a satisfying feeling for you to get that call of, we had no freaking idea what was going on throughout this whole movie. And then the end, smacked us right in the face and made it all make sense it, you know because you're getting throughout the film you're getting these flashbacks of what has happened and what's led us yeah. to where we are now mm -hmm. i hope i'm baiting you guys really good here because god damn it you need to watch this movie and you know you get that climax and you're like wow this is all it's like a clock in a time bomb that's ticking 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 and then the explosion goes off is is it yes. more fun for you to direct a film like that where you know you're making a time bomb for your audience? Oh, absolutely. I love the idea of, you know, some people say, oh, you know, things are slow or whatever. I loved it because it's all like old school Hitchcock, right? It's just slowly mm -hmm. just working. It's like a massage, right? You're just getting into, you get in the grooves. And then all of a sudden the train just takes off and it just builds. It's like a roller coaster going up, 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 and then boom, goes down, yes. right? And so what goes up must come down. And that's what I feel on this movie. It's like we just slowly track up on this movie, build, 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 build. And then finally, you know, the, the, the big finale. So yeah, I love that. I love messing with audiences. Jacob's Ladder is one of my favorite movies. Oh. School Jacob's Ladder. <laughs> and uh, uh, Repulsion, you know, and uh, just, you know, The Shining, like we talked about. And it's just like, I like getting in the mind and, and, and you know, hinting at things, but then also letting the audience kind of fill it out the blanks, you know? Mm -hmm. And that really, you know, because whatever I can do on film is great, but it's like, it won't match what you're thinking and your imagination, you know? Exactly. And, and so that's what I, I, I really enjoy. And I really like these characters. I, I really identified, um, I, I grew up with a single mom and sisters and stuff. I, I've got a, a daughter who's 16, I've been married for, for, for tw over 20 years. And so women have been a very big uh, component in my life. And I just saw the script as so, a, a great story to tell, you know, um, uh -huh. and it's got all the, it's a good, it's a horror movie, but it's definitely, and it's got themes about, you know, you have to face your demons. Yes. Right? Literally and figuratively. Right. So that's kind of the, the message that you cannot let guilt rack, you know, rack you and, 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 and uh, consume you that you need to face things because sooner or later you're going to face them you know? whether you want to or not so you better be prepared and what right. i love about what you just said i swear to god you're reading my notes here with me but it's not just our main character beth that's having to face the demons um you know there are more than one you know there's more than one group of people in this movie that has to face their demons and much like willie's wonderland you know you got to work with the great nicholas cage uh, but you also have some teenagers on set for that film, you know, younger yeah. adults. Yeah. In this movie, you work with, um, so, you know, adults, young adults, and you even have some children that you're yeah. filming with. Um, what was it like having the children on set for such a dark horror movie? Was it a thing where uh, all, all the actors and act uh, all the actresses around and all the crew was very soft with them, letting them know, like, hey, it's going to get heavy here for a minute. I hope yeah. you're prepared for this, you know, yeah. letting them meet the monster, letting them, you know, Troy, yeah, yeah, yeah. to know him a little bit. Did, yeah. did that really soften the blow, you think, for them a little bit? Well, it was wonderful because Alexis Knapp, who plays Mary Lynn, um, her <laughs> daughter, her daughter Kai is Sadie. So it was mother daughter. So okay. that was really cool, you know, and that was kind of one of her, her first movies. I think she did some TV show, but for the movie, that was her first movie. So that was really cool to be a part of that. And um, yeah. they're lovely people, and uh, we had a great time. And since you know, I have little kids too. Like I felt like comfortable talking to her and stuff. And she said something so sweet to me. She said that uh, 
you know, for a horror director, you're a really nice man, you know, <laughs> you know, and that goes back to what you're talking about with, uh, you know, the, the method, right, of, 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 sh uh -huh. of shooting a movie. Um, I do believe in happy sets. And what's interesting is the set was very light, you know, light hearted and just everybody laughing, having a good time. And then you say action, then you're doing this deep, dark stuff and then cut. And then we're back to, you know, and that was cool. You know, um, I don't believe that you have to, you know, suffer for the art, meaning, you know, you know, okay, we're doing a deep, dark movie. So, you know, and so it's like, leave me alone. And I'm screaming at the crew and I'm like, I don't know. Right. Like, that road man you know we're all here making a movie and we're all love movies right we're all movie makers and um, we're a team you know and you're just trying to get that team across that goal line you know on, on one of these films yeah. So, yeah. well and i've always felt like you know from my limited experience of working on sets um mm -hmm. when you have a director that is soft and kind and sweet. And I'm not talking about a pushover. I don't mean that by yeah. any stretch of the imagination. So there's, definitely but... a, there's definitely a line for that. Yeah. 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 But when you have a guy that's willing to listen and willing to be accepting of other ideas, I feel like your actors, your actresses, your crew are going to work harder for you because they see that this means just as much to you. You're not just on the guy there screaming at everybody to try to get a paycheck and move on to the next project. This yeah. is something that means a lot to you. And, and that comes across not only in this, but in Willie's Wonderland as well. You could feel watching these films, how much fun you guys had. While this yeah. is a dark film, you can see just the light in ladies' eyes in this film. And going from, you know, something as sweet as picking apples to eating rotten apples, you yeah. know, like there's just so many things in this movie that yeah. if you're not watching, you're going to regret those 45 seconds that you blinked or said, hey, to your wife next to you. Yeah. We watched it three times in the span of three days to oh, pick wow. up on things that we missed the first time. And oh. I love it. This is a film that um, I think I, one of my favorite films of the last five years is The Dark and the Wicked. And I attribute Great this movie. a lot to I love yes. that movie. Yeah. This feels like The Dark and the Wicked to me. Um, and where it one ups The Dark and the Wicked to me, the visualization of the monster. I'm all about using your imagination. I love that. And you guys do yeah. that through a lot of this film. And yeah. Guys, please don't think I'm being super, super coy. That's not what I'm doing here. But I just feel like this is something you need to experience for yourself. And you can do that by clicking the links down in the description below. But you do get that payoff of the monster. Because, I, like I said, I grew up like you, you know, a 70s, 80s horror fan where I see the hammer get raised and dropped and blood splatter on the wall. Yeah. I don't got to see it. Yeah. But there is always that feeling of regret when you watch a film and you don't see the big bad. You have to use your imagination the whole time. In this, yeah. we see the monster and yeah. we see, you know, almost Satan himself. While Satan doesn't travel, he sends his minions to do his work yeah. for him. Yeah. Um, we get to see almost the encapsulation of the most evil form of Satan available. And when that moment happens, there's another crazy part right there, too, with another great female actress and the police officer. Um, yeah. What was it like shooting? I, I mean, again, I don't want to go too far, but what was it like mm -hmm. shooting that quick scene with the female police officer at that moment? You know, that's interesting. Uh, not to give anything away, but I, I had to shoot. I had that scene was was um, mapped out on two different days. So the first half of the scene, I had to shoot one day and then I shot another week of the movie. Then I came back and picked up the second half. <laughs> and and so you, when you do something like that, right, you need to know exactly where they were, how this is going to cut. Again, it was like Willie's. I shot the cut. They didn't have a lot of time. I shot this movie in 18 days. And so it's like, okay, we need to know. We need to know exactly here. So, and so that was a very big challenge. That was one of my, that was, that was a tough one. Um, but I feel like it really it's paid off. It's good. Oh, the payoff on it's great. Yeah. Yeah. The, the payoff on that scene is so good because it's not just what happens there, but it's the immediate aftermath yeah. to what happens directly after that. That like yeah. throughout this whole movie, you have that feeling of unrest, that feeling of anxiety because you're not getting your questions answered. Yeah. It's like you're really, really hungry and you give me a spoonful of rice telling me you're going to feed me 25 things. Yeah. You kept your word. You fed yeah. me 25 things, but yeah. it was 25 pieces of rice. I'm yeah. still hungry. Yeah. I want more. Yeah. And that's what I love about this movie. You're constantly giving me little things, little mm -hmm. things just to mm -hmm. keep me going, you yeah. know, just to, you know, in heighten, you know, enhance it. Yeah. And the payoff at the end is one of those ones that 
I'm not going to lie to you. The first time I watched this, I was getting really nervous because I was having so much fun with the movie and I was enjoying it. And I was like, how are they going to pay this off? I felt like on my first watch, the payoff was the beginning, was the intro. I was like, the first act is the payoff. We're going to circle back around to that payoff. You don't. So guys, when you start watching this, you're just getting started in the intro. This isn't a feed you the ending and come back. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about this movie is the power that you have. And I'm going to liken the intro to a scream you know when you watch scream for the first time like you just said that first seven minutes could have been a short film mm -hmm. and it's over yeah you know but you took that short film you made it its own intro and you build onto it just like uh, casey becker drew barrymore from scream that first 12 minutes could have been its own short film and it's over but you add so much more to it to give the meat and that to think that that's just the top bun of the mm -hmm. sandwich is yeah. insanity to me so um one last question I have about the Accurse before we move on to something else I'd like to ask you about. Yeah. Um, what is the best compliment that you've received about the Accurse so far? Oh, wow. That's an interesting one. Um, um, definitely a, a one that it, it just, they kept thinking about it at days after they watched it. Yes. That to me is the best compliment because, you know, someone actually, so I take care of my mom. She's 91. And so a lot of that wow. stuff. God bless you, man. Thank you. And, and some of that stuff with Ambrose, like I took, you know, um, you know, like I said, my, my mom watches, you know, two in the morning, uh, she's a night owl and she's watching these uh, murder mysteries, you know, and the, the glow of the TV and all that. And it's like, it's like Ambrose time, right? So I took some mm -hmm. of that stuff. And what someone told me was they take care of their mom too. And they started thinking about their mother and how you know we have how we have to take care of our parents and they're getting older and it, and it just really started that conversation and and this is a horror movie right but like the generational of like what's the duty yes. to take care of the parents and the guilt if you don't and all that so that was probably one of the coolest compliments i've had and what about that i mean like you talking about that even goes back to the lineup you could do it with other people but when it's someone close to you like that it's mm -hmm. different yeah. You know, when it's personal like that, and it's your pitch. Yeah. I wish I had that opportunity, man. My mom's right here. She passed away at the age of 51 in her sleep. I have no idea what happened. She just fell asleep and she didn't wake up. And, mm. um, you know, I, I envy the you and your ability to have your mom for this long. It's an amazing thing. And, you know, directing a film like this, you know, like they say, the best fiction comes from reality. And so, you mm. know, I, you were able to make this look legit because it's something that you've lived. And to me what's more beautiful than that? You know, something that you can go back on in 10 years and watch and you can go that I remember taking care of my mother like that. I remember being in those moments and that's something that nobody can ever take away from you. Um, you. So I know Thank I've said you. it a couple times guys, but it's my show. I'm going to say it again. The links for the movie are down in the description as well as Kevin's social media links. So make sure you're giving him a follow, but Kevin, before I let you go, um, I loved Willie's Wonderland, man. I really genuinely did. I loved The Accursed, and I can't wait for a physical media copy. Do we have any information on if we're going to be getting a physical media copy in the future? Yes. I think it comes out uh, December 6th. Nice. Good. Because, listen, I love streaming. I love my experiences. But I love being able to watch special features. I love being able to watch commentary. I love being able to learn as much as I possibly can about these movies I love. So I cannot wait can to I, watch. Can I show you something, videos. Ken? Can I show you something real of quick? Of course. Yeah, here. absolutely. You talk about physical media. So here we go. We got physical yes, media. Yes, man. So I am a big steel book and uh, yeah, lo long live physical media, buddy. <laughs> Dude, I'm with you because look, like I said, I love streaming. I love it. But if yeah. somebody gets their panties in a bunch and something gets taken off streaming, they can't come to my house and take it off my shelf. I can still watch it whenever I want. Yeah. And watching behind the scenes, watching director's commentary, being able to soak that up and learn as much as I possibly can. Yeah. I love it, man. I love I the do. business. I love Ridley what you guys. That's one of my favorite things. Like I love just putting on a Ridley Scott commentary and listen to him. Like Ridley's in my living room, just speaking about, he's so good. I love his commentaries. <laughs> well, you watch the commentary on alien or aliens. Oh. The one commentary piece that's really, really a, a bummer is when the director is just watching it going, Oh, well, this is what's happening here. This is what's happening here. It's like, I know I can see it. I yeah. want to pick your brain. I want to hear yeah. it behind the scenes. And yeah. um, Ridley does that. 
Ridley yeah. is very good at ex- just describing what's happening on every facet of everything. So um, before I let you go, we talked about obviously Willie's and the Accursed, two films yeah. that I'm very, very much a big fan of. That's why I was so excited and I wanted to reach out and get you back here for the Accursed. But do you have anything coming up in the pipeline in the future that you're working on that you can let us know about? Or is everything kind of NDA under wraps right now? No, I I, uh, I just uh, wrapped a movie called Oak that I'm in post-production on. That's kind of got a Nightmare on Elm Street meets It Follows vibe. It's a teenage horror movie. It's pretty cool. cool. It's got Armand Asante in it, um, uh, Joy Lauren Adams. So I'm working on that right now. I've got a really cool horror script called The Houdini Pack that I'm working on. I've got a, I've got a, a couple other projects, a sci-fi movie. I've got about four or five. So, you know, movies, it just depends on, you know, the right cast, the budget, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of moving pieces, you know. So, um, but I'm I'm excited for the future. So Dude, I am too. And anytime you have something come out, if you're willing to come and talk to somebody oh. about it, oh yeah. My number's always on, man. I would love to talk to you. It's always just a pleasure to talk to you. You're one of the kindest people, and it's nice how you're willing to go so deep and behind the scenes about what you do. So, uh, yeah. Kevin, please don't go anywhere, my friend. I got a couple more questions for you. Um, everybody else, as always, keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon. <laughs>